Can everybody hear me? Go ahead and give us a thumbs up or a yes in the chat. And Robert, can you read the chat off for me when people post anything in there? I can't see it. Absolutely. Thank and you. it looks like everyone can hear. All thumbs up. Great. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. My name is Abigail McAllister. I'm the superintendent for the consumer decision making contest for our virtual 4 H university. And can everybody see my screen? Yep, good to go. Okay, great. You can see it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what is consumer decision making? Everyone is a consumer who has individual needs and wants. We all make consumer decisions every day, so it's really important that we make purchasing decisions based on thorough knowledge and understanding of individual needs and wants. So regardless of if we know it or not, we're making these decisions very regularly. So this contest kind of reflects that. It's a competitive event that enables 4-Hers to practice making decisions based on information about a situation and marketplace options available. So some general contest rules and guidelines. The contest will be held on Tuesday, June 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. And it, contestants can work either individually or in teams. About two to three members per team is what's advised. So contestants and teams will work to place four consumer products or services from best to worst for four different classes. And they will also give written reasons for one of the classes as assigned. And that'll be specified on the survey that, survey that they'll receive. So one of the four classes will be a mystery class. The written reasons class will not be the mystery class. And we'll kind of talk about what the mystery class means a little bit later. So the time limit is one hour and 20 minutes to complete the online survey provided. If you do not finish the survey before the time is up, go ahead and submit what you have. It's better that I have something versus nothing. So even if it's not complete, just give me what you have. Contestants will be awarded a maximum of 50 points per class for placings. So there's four classes. So that would make a total maximum of points for placings of 200. And then they'll receive a maximum of 100 points for written reasons. So your total maximum points for the contest would be 300 points. In the event of a tie for first place, the contestant with the highest written reason score will be declared the winner. Using the study guide while completing the contest survey, since we're on a virtual format now, will result in automatic disqualification. So please don't have your study guide out while completing this online survey. So the contest classes for the 2020 state contest will be selected from those listed below. So like we were talking about, there's four different classes. Three of them will come from this list. And then there will be one mystery class. So the mystery class may be anything, you know, it's kind of a mystery for a reason. You won't know when you go in. Um, so the different classes are microwaves, credit cards, luggage, garment steamers, fitness trackers, fitness centers and plans, uh, desktop, laptop, notebook computers, and headphones. So expect three of the classes to be from this list. And then there will be that one mystery class um, which, which will be the class, it won't be chosen for written reasoning either. It'll just be for placing. So each class will have a hypothetical problem presented as a situation statement. For example, here's a situation statement, and we're gonna kind of use this as the example throughout the training today. Um, the situation statements on the exam are gonna be a lot, I guess, more difficult than this. This is a very basic, um, just kind of to help us understand the process of this contest. So the example is John is making muffins to take to his grandmother. He will need to use standard measuring equipment to measure ingredients for his recipe. For the flour and sugar, he needs to use a dry measuring cup. He would like to use a one half cup measure for the sugar and flour. So for the decision making pro process, first you're going to identify the class. What are you judging exactly? For this last situation statement, it was measuring equipment for his cooking. So we got to think of the general characteristics we want for measuring equipment, their use and the service that we might expect from them. And then you're also going to analyze the situation statement. So read that statement carefully, pick out the standards, 
Ask yourself who's using the item. How and where will the item be used? What kind of care or upkeep will the item require? What kind of cost is involved, both how much it costs up front, and then if there's any upkeep costs associated with the item. Also, how long will the item last? What is the quality of the item? Are there any environmental or disposal concerns? And most importantly, what does the consumer need and want the most? And that's gonna be hidden in that situation statement. So you're really gonna to wanna to read closely and kind of think about what does that consumer need the most and then what do they want the most? So each product or service will be given a number. So there will be four different products or services per class. So it'll be choice one, choice two, choice three, and choice four. The survey will ask you to rank these choices from best to worst, best being first, worst being last. So you'll rank the numbers assigned to products or services accordingly. So for example, we're gonna go back to our situation statement about John needing those measuring equipment. Um, so for the flour and sugar, he needs a dry measuring cup. And then below we have all of our different classes. So we have class one, a six ounce coffee mug, class two, a standard one half cup liquid measuring cup, class three, a standard one fourth cup dry measuring cup, and class four, a standard one half cup dry measuring cup. So for all four of the classes, you'll go ahead and rank the order from best to worst. So what's going to be the best choice, and then the second best, third best, and then the worst choice. Uh, so for all four, you'll do that, and then there'll be one class where you'll write out written, written reasons behind it. So does anybody, can y'all go ahead and put in the chat box, what do you think the ranking would be for these classes? And I'll take any questions in the meantime. So I'm seeing 4231, 4312, and 4312. So it would actually be 4321. And we'll kind of go into the reasoning behind this a little bit later, but I think the consensus was that four and three were definitely on the top of the set. Um, so, you know, before three, two, one, you want that one half cup dry measuring cup as first. That's exactly what he wanted. Then we have number two. Number three would be standard one fourth cup dry measuring cup, still a dry measuring cup. Then we have number two, which is a liquid measuring cup, but still a measuring cup. And then number one, it's a mug, um, and that's really defeating the purpose of the measurement. But we'll go a lot more into those kind of details as we go along and go through the written reasonings behind it. So the way we score these contests is through the Hormel computing system. And I don't want y'all to really focus too much on this, but just to let you know that um, say your ranking was just maybe two numbers off, this computing system takes into account for it. So just because you misplaced two numbers doesn't mean you're gonna get half the score. So for example, for this chart, the ranking was three, one, two, four at the very top, and that gave a perfect score. But say you ranked one and three in a different order. Say you did one, two, one, three, two, four, you'd still get a 48. So it kind of takes into account those decisions as well. So just to let you know how it's being scored. So for the written reasons, one of the four classes will require written reasoning, and this will require you to go into more detail about your reasoning for your decision in placing those products or services. And it looks a little bit like this. So this is going to be the format that's going to be on the survey. And it, I, I think we're going to do more of a fillable format where you can kind of fill in the numbers and then give out your written reasoning. Um, so for this one, for that example we did earlier, we put, we place this class of measuring cups in that little parentheses for product and service, one, or four, three, two, one. So four comma three comma two comma one. In our top pair, we placed four over three because, and then we write out our reasoning. And then we have a section that says we grant that. So we're still gonna point out what positive qualities were in three that could still make it a decent decision, but just not the first decision. And so we're going to do that for each one. So for our middle pair, we placed three over two because, and then we grant that. So we're going to point out 
positive qualities about number two. In our bottom pair, we place two over one because, give our reasoning, and then we're gonna put we grant that and give some positive qualities about number one. And at the very end, we're gonna put we placed one last because, and then give all your reasonings as to why you placed one last. And here is an example. So I put the situation statement at the top, top right, and then I put the classes at the bottom right, and then I put out the reason, written reasoning example to the left. So you can kind of see the big picture of it all. And if you want to go ahead and use that as an example, maybe take out your cell phone, take a picture of this, or refer back to it when it's getting posted on YouTube. So for this risk, written reasons example, we place class of this class of measuring cups four, three, two, one. In our top pair, we placed four over three because four measures one half cup, which is what John needs to measure the flour and sugar. It's also a dry measuring cup, which he needs to accurately measure these dry ingredients. We grant that three can still measure dry ingredients and two one fourth cup measurements equals one half cup. So he would just have to scoop it twice to get a half a cup. Um, so see how in the we grant that we still point out positive characteristics about number three. So then for our middle pair, we place three over two because three is a dry measuring cup, while two is designed to measure liquids. And, you know, if you bake a lot, if you cook a lot, that's something that really does matter. We want to make sure we're using those dry measuring cups versus the liquid measuring cups. Um, we grant that two is still a measuring cup and two measures one half cup, which is what he was looking for in the measurement department. In our bottom pair, we place two over one because two is standard measuring equipment, while one is not designed to measure ingredients. One is designed to hold coffee. We grant that one is still a cup that can hold ingredients. And we placed one last because it is not standardized measuring equipment, it does not measure dry ingredients, and it is not a one half cup measure. And so this example seems a little redundant once you get down to the bottom and you're kind of going through everything, but for the scenarios that are going to be on the actual survey, there may be some classes where all of them have really good qualities to them and all of them would definitely be useful for what the consumer is looking for and they could all do the job. So it might be a little trickier, but this is a great way to kind of practice how to put them in order and write out your reasonings. Does anybody have any questions about written reasonings? watching the chat. Okay. It looks like we're good for now. All right, great. So when I'm scoring for the written reasons, I'm kind of looking at these things. I'm looking to see if you're giving an accurate comparison of each pair, whether it's top, middle, and bottom. So how you went through all those, we grant that we chose this because I'm looking to see if you present differences in an organized manner. You're presenting the most important things first. So looking into those factors that really matter in that decision that the consumer is making and really focusing on those. So say, for example, you know, somebody's looking for a bike and he really needs safety features, but he also really likes the color blue. Well, obviously we're going to try to focus on you know, reaching those safety features before we're going to focus on the color blue. So I'm going to make sure that these kind of things are addressed when you're making those decisions. Um, also, I'm going to look to see you're using a positive approach to mention superior points of first choices in pairs rather than weaknesses of the second choice. So for example, when I placed four over three, I wrote out really good features about four. I didn't only focus on what was wrong with three. You know, I really highlighted why I chose four over three instead of highlighting why I didn't choose three. So focus on those positive traits of the one you chose. Um, also, make sure when you're granting that you're still attributing whatever advantage something has. So even for that last one, even for the coffee cup, it could hold ingredients. So I made sure to you know point that out under the it grants that. So after the three pairs are discussed, then you'll describe your reasonings for placing the bottom choice last. So I really want to see that nicely organized, written in complete sentences, making sure you're doing all of that. Any questions? I 
think we're good. Okay. So when completing the survey, this may help because sometimes when you're looking at all the different options, there may be a lot of different qualities for some of these products, especially if there's an electronic, you know, there's so many different specifications for certain products and it can get kind of overwhelming. So, you know, I would encourage you to make a chart if you have to write it out or maybe pull up a Word document and make a chart while you're going through the survey and help organize your thoughts. So, for example, this chart below, um, it has item one, two, three and four. And then it has the different features that you're really trying to focus on because of the situation statement. So, for example, this was for sunscreen. Obviously, the active ingredient was important in the, the situation. So was whether it was waterproof, the different SPF and the cost. So this was organized nicely into a table to kind of help you see the big picture of all the products at one. So that encourage you to do this while you're going through the survey. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, Shannon Waits wants to know, will there be a time limit specifically for writing reasons or will the entire time limit including judging uh, and reason writing? That's a great question. So it'll just be a total time limit this year. I know in the past, I think it was, you know, a couple minutes per, you know, each decision and then, you know, a little bit longer to write your written reasons. But this year it's just going to be the total one hour, 20 minutes. So it'll be up to you to kind of watch your time and make sure you're keeping up with the pace. Any more questions? I think we're good for now. Okay. So some tips for success, use that study guide that was uh, posted and made available to, uh, you know, agents and everybody in the contest. Use that study guide to learn about products before the contest, but ultimately that situation statement is the most important to consider. The study guide will kind of help you think about all the different things to consider when choosing products, but ultimately when you're looking at that situation statement, that should take priority over the reviews for the product or whatever else was, you know, in that study guide. So that situation, make sure to really focus on that. When ranking your classes, think about what features and qualities are most important to the consumer. Maybe one person considers reviews more important when another person considers um, pricing more important. So make sure you're focusing on what that consumer wants and needs the most. Um, also try to complete the survey in, in its entirety. So like I said earlier, it's timed. Um, a guess is better than nothing. So if you start running out of time, even making a guess will likely earn you more points than leaving it blank. So if you can complete the survey if, in its entirety. Also make sure to submit your survey before the time is up, completed or not. Um, you know, I know in the past there have been certain time limits for different parts of the contest, it might be good to kind of pace yourself accordingly, kind of make a time for time limit for each different class you're going through. That way you're staying up with the pace. Um, and make sure you provided your name and the names of team members at the beginning of the survey. So to recap, you will have an hour and 20 minutes to complete the survey provided for this contest during the specified time period, which is on Tuesday, June 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. I'll be posting that survey during then, and that's that one, one hour and 20 minutes you'll have to complete it. You can work individually or in teams of two to three. You will be responsible for ranking four classes. Three will be simply ranking products or services in the class from best to worst. One of these three classes will be a mystery class, and then the other class will be ranking the products and services in the class from best to worst, and a written reasoning section. Any questions? And here's my contact information. If you have any questions as you're studying or, you know, you're looking for certain material or anything, just let me know. Just shoot me an email. I'll make sure to answer it as quickly as I can. Hi, oh, yeah. Abigail. This is Shannon Waits from Vermilion hey. Parish. A quick question, uh, a couple of questions actually. In the rules for the contest, it says that teams can be three people or four people. And we planned according to that guideline. But your presentation said two or three. So if we could get clarification on that, that would be helpful. Sure. My other question. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. 
My other question is if they are working as a team, so is it like it has been in the past in that they would be all in the same room together and they would complete one survey as a team and be allowed to um, communicate and discuss with each other as they're going through the situations? Correct. So I'll go ahead and answer your second question. I'm going to turn over the first question to Robert. I'm unsure if we can do teams of three to four. I'm sure it's, you know, that's more of a Robert question. Okay. Um, as far as the second question, um, for completing the survey and the team, they will complete one survey together. And so as far as we know right now, it's kind of unclear as to whether they can gather or not. If they cannot gather, I would encourage, I would encourage them to either work through teams together or you know via cell phone conference call together um, but if they can gather in person and it's acceptable at the time to do so then i would encourage them to do so okay that that helps clarify thank you so much no problem. and robert um about the team limit is three to four appropriate um three to four is what we've been communicating uh we're going to circle back and just make sure we cover all of our bases but I believe that's what it would be at this point in time. Okay. So three to four is appropriate. They can work in teams of three to four. Yes. Is it possible for one person to come by themselves? Yes. So they can work individually as well. There's a there's another question. Um, Will there be a practice survey release so the contestants can become familiar with the layout of the survey before the contest? Um, I like I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, Abigail may be able to uh, elaborate a little bit further, but uh, as far as becoming familiar with the layout and everything of uh, how the contest will be delivered, there is going to be something else, uh, a training uh, walkthrough session that's going to be offered on June 5th to walk the contestants themselves uh, through all of the technology and how they'll have to go about go, uh, competing in their individual contests. So uh, it may not be a practice survey for uh, consumer foods, but it will be something where they can get familiar with the format of how it, it will be delivered. Uh, I hope that answers your question. And as far as the practice for, I guess, the layout of consumer decision making questions, I would encourage y'all to go look at that study guide, but also there's lots of examples online that you can kind of um, get ideas of how it's going to be laid out or just go through some questions. If you just Googled consumer decision making uh, contest example extension, um, then it should pop up. There's another question. The winners will go to, to the national contest, right? How will that work individually? Um, these are new. The the that that component is still uh, fairly new to me, Donna. But if you give me a few short minutes, uh, even if after the call ends, I'll clarify that and I'll drop that answer back in this chat. Uh, just still getting familiar with everything. Thank you, Robert. Any more questions? Do we need the video on for the contestants while they're completing the survey? Are you talking about the team's meeting? Like for if it's an individual competing. If it's an individual competing, I wouldn't say you'd need the video call on because um, I'll be I'll be live during that whole time that y'all are completing the survey. Um, but if it's an individual and they don't really have any questions, I wouldn't say you need to tune in. You will need to tune in to get the survey information, you know, the survey link. But after that, if you want to jump off the video call, you're more than welcome to do so. Thank you. Looks like uh, there's no more questions in the chat. I definitely welcome anyone to unmute their mic, their mic, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. 
Um, and as soon as this is uploaded, I will uh, post the link. like we're good. Uh, some folks are starting to jump off, uh, but again, uh, the floor is definitely open. You'll see the contact information right there on the screen, but other than that, uh, thanks for coming today, and you'll have a great day. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Abigail.